Hey everyone, so today we're going through all the content you need to know for Unit 6 of AP Stat, which is inference for categorical data, more specifically uh, proportions, okay? So the first thing let's touch upon is what is a point estimate? It's just a value, more speci specifically a statistic that estimates your population parameter, okay? Um, so let's say I have a confidence interval of 3 to 5, then your point estimate would be right in between that, 4. So it's just a number that estimates it because you're not going to be exact, um, but we're going to be using a confidence interval to test to find the actual population parameter. Um, now, a key thing to know is the difference between a confidence interval and a confidence level. Your confidence interval is the range of values that estimates your population parameter. It's pretty obvious. But your confidence level is that like actual percentage, like 90%, 95%. That's the probability that the parameter falls within a specified range. And something to note here is the actual interpretation because... What you need to do is this first part, that confidence interval interpretation, that is your uh, conclusion. Your conclusion needs to conclude in context. And so you're going to say this, we are blank percent confident that the interval from blank to blank captures the true parameter of interest in context. So you need to have that down for the actual confidence interval. Um, but then a lot of times you're going to see an effort use a follow-up to that question dealing with confidence level and asking you to interpret that. So just have this in mind as well. And now a couple more caveats before we move on to the actual confidence intervals is that if we increase that confidence level, confidence level, not interval, that's going to increase our margin of error and make it wider. If we increase the sample size, right, so we're getting more accurate, we've talked about this in sampling distributions as well, it decreases our margin of error, which makes it narrower. And also, this is really important, you, you're going to see this on a multiple choice, I bet. Um, bias does not affect margin of error. So this is going to be like one of those answer choices about like what affects margin of error. And one of the answer choices is going to be bias. It does not affect margin of error, okay? So the acronym you need to know is PANIC, which stands for parameter of interest. And then your assumptions and conditions, and the name of the test, state that interval, and then finally just conclude, okay? So for a parameter, you're basically saying like what you're actually doing the interval about, right? So if you have a one sample, it's just the true proportion of whatever. And if you have two samples, then just state the true proportion of whatever and whatever number one. So number one, number two, right? So the same thing, except you're doing it for two. And you have the procedure, pretty simple. If it's one sample, you're just doing the Z interval for, for Z interval for P. If it's two sample, it's P1 minus P2, because you're trying to find that difference to see if there is a difference in proportion. Uh, conditions, these we covered in sampling distributions as well, so make sure you really have those down in sampling distributions. Your random sample, your independence based on that 10% condition, then your large counts, and everything is the same for a two sample, except now you have to do random sample and everything for both of them. You have to check for 10% condition for both of them. It's very annoying, but you gotta do, temp uh, you gotta do the large counts condition for both of them. Um, so yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Now, to calculate the actual interval, you can use your calculator, which is highly recommended, or you can, be a, you can be a weirdo and calculate it with this formula, the point estimate plus or minus that margin of error, which is the Z star value times the standard deviation. And finally, conclude, right? That's the last part, just conclude within context. So you can see, again, this interpretation part, this deals back with our confidence interval and how to interpret it, so really have that down and do lots of practice problems to hammer it in. Um, another note is that if you're too sample, a confidence interval contains the value of zero within it, then you cannot conclude a difference in population proportion. The reason I included this is because in follow-up questions, you're gonna you're gonna have like you're gonna do your test and then get like a value of like negative one to like three point two, and then in the follow-up it's gonna ask you, can you conclude a difference or yada 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 or something like that, and then it's gonna include zero. So then you gotta remember that you cannot conclude a difference because it includes zero, right? Because it could just not have a difference, right? Okay, so. That is confidence intervals, but now for proportions, you also have significance tests. For significance tests, you're going to use the phantoms uh, acronym. So your parameter of interest, just like the same as confidence intervals, but now you're going to have hypotheses. You're going to have HO, which is your null hypothesis, or it is the stated distribution of the categorical, whatever. Okay, yeah, that long, long definition. And you're also going to have your um, alternate hypothesis. Um, basically the stated distribution of the population of interest is not correct. So your null is like what they claim. And then your alternate hypothesis is like what your like alternative is. Like you're trying to prove the alternative is right. If there's like significance. Okay. It'll make more sense when I get to the actual test itself. 
And then you have your assumptions and conditions just like normal. It varies a little bit. The name of the test, significance test. Calculate the actual test statistics or test statistic is more of so a value just to uh, evaluate the actual test in of itself. Now, usually you can just use your calculator. If you use significance uh, test command, it'll just give you the test statistic yourself. Don't calculate it by hand with a uh, formula. That's just don't do that. And then find your actual p-value. Your p-value is what determines whether you are going to reject your null hypothesis or fail to reject your null hypothesis, okay? So your p-value is super important. Usually you're gonna be dealing with the alpha value of like 0.05, right? So if it's like below 0.05, then it's statistically significant and you would reject HO. And then if it's above that, you cannot do that, right? Remember all that? And then you're gonna make a decision, right? You're gonna reject or fail to reject HO. And the final is just state uh, your conclusion in context. When you state your conclusion in context, that's very important. That's when you're touching upon HA, right? Your alternative hy uh, alternative hypothesis. When you make your decision, you don't have to say HO in context, but when you do uh, do the latter part for HA, you do have to say that in context, okay? All right, let's get into the actual test itself. Uh, a lot of the same things. So for one sample, you're just talking about P and then your HA, and then for a two sample, you're doing, uh, you, there's there's another way to say this, instead of saying P1 is equal to P2, you can also say P1 minus P2 equals something like zero, okay? So basically, there's not a difference. The name of your procedure, right, it's a one sample Z test for P, or if you're doing a two sample, it's just a two sample Z test for P1 minus P2. Your conditions, random sample, like always, then your 10% condition, and then your large counts, uh, condition, right? Very similar to the confidence interval. For two sample, it's the exact same thing, right? Except now you got to make sure it works for both samples. Cool. All right. Finally, just make a conclusion. This is very important, actually. So I'll just like make sure you can see this entire thing. Pause the video so you can actually interpret this. This is basically what you need to have in the bank for interpreting, okay? Interpreting is super important. Having the right wording, making sure you have the right phrasing as well to get all those points. So there we have it for the one sample and then the two sample. Cool. Now, the final topics in this thing we need to cover are uh, type 1 and type 2 error and then power, okay? So when you're talking about uh, significance tests, usually they won't explicitly make you talk about type 1 and type 2 error or power. These are just like extraneous concepts that come up when follow-up questions about significance tests. So it's just good to know them because they might show up. Uh, so type 1 error, I like to think about it as a false negative. So this is where uh, the null hypothesis is true, but we reject it and conclude HA, right? So, I mean, there's there's really no way else to explain this. Um, but something else to note is that your alpha value is equivalent to the probability of your type 1 error, okay? So if you increase the alpha value, the probability of making a type 1 error is also going to increase. And then you have the other type of error, which is the pretty much the opposite. Instead of a false negative, it is a false positive. That's where your null hypothesis is actually false, but we fail to reject it. And then instead, we cannot include, conclude HA, okay? All right, the last thing here is power, okay? So what exactly is power? Power is the probability that our null hypothesis will be rejected when the alternative is true, right? So the chance of making a right decision when HO is false because HA is true. So the equation for this can also be shown as one minus the probability of making a type two error. And then how do you increase power? There's three main ways. You can either increase the alpha value, but it also has that drawback of increasing type one error. Um, like we talked about before, you can increase the sample size or you can increase the distance between your null and your uh, alternative hypothesis value, okay? So if you do that, then the test is gonna be more uh, sensitive to large changes and it's going to detect a significance if there is a difference, right? So if you had two values like two and three and they're close together, then it's going to be harder to tell versus if you have like two and 100 as your null and alternative hypothesis respectively. So that does it for all the content you need to know for unit six.